So this is the third video and on Euclidean geometry, once again, we're, we're returning to cylinders. We're talking about bottle forms. If you remember in the first video, I had mentioned how one of the reasons why you want to start with a center line whenever you're drawing any kind of cylindrical object is that it gives you a chance to kind of measure overall height, but also it gives you something to then base your two sides being symmetrical to each other. This is pretty important when it comes to drawing any of the ellipses, any of the, the ellipses of the form. But it's even more important when it comes to kind of complexities like the neck of a bottle form. And there are all kinds of different bottle forms. We have a bunch in the department. I don't have time to do a demo on every single one. Um, but as I pointed out, there is there are demo drawings from previous years. Of all kinds of demo forms, all kinds of bottle forms. So when thinking about a bottle, it's good to think about where the shoulder of the bottle is. Even though in the end we might not have a cylinder, a, a, an elliptical line representing that shoulder. And so I'm kind of thinking about where is the point before we get any curvature of the, the shoulder, which is right about here. Where's the point where the curvature has started, but it's really hasn't really started to turn in at all, which is about there. And then I start thinking about the shoulder becoming the neck. And I, I like to start the neck for this kind of bottle form, not always appropriate for every type of curve, but for this kind of bottle form, I like to start with the neck being kind of like an egg shape and then connect it to a line like this. Because it's essentially kind of an S curve. And so if you do this for the the bottom part of the S curve, it's a lot easier to keep that symmetrical and then build the, the extension for the top part of the neck. So remember, principle, right, which is that the ellipses need to be getting more open as they go below our eye level. So we know that we're that the top of this bottle form must be below our eye level because I can still see the top of it. I can still see into the bottle. So then that means that this next ellipse has to be at least just slightly more open than that. And when I say slightly, I mean very slightly. Like you could draw this ellipse and that ellipse exactly the same and no one would really notice. But by the time we get down here, this ellipse does need to be a little bit more and perceptibly, noticeably more open than that top ellipse. And then again, by the time we get to the bottom, bottom of the bottle. On bottle forms like this, I also like to draw kind of like the very bottom ellipse slightly smaller to help remind me that this bottom of the bottle curves in just a little bit because of the way it's constructed. Actually, because it's a glass bottle, it actually does this. Right? That's the, the way wine bottles are formed because of the way they're they're you know the glass is blown. So okay, all this so far in vine. I'm going to at this point switch to a charcoal pencil. But I could also just switch to black conte. Primarily I'm switching to a charcoal pencil because I know what I'm going to be getting to up there, so I figure I might as well just do it all in charcoal pencil. And we're pretty close to getting done with this bottle form. And notice now that the drawing is closer to done, I don't have to redo these lines because, you know, they're not visible, so it's okay if they just stay in vine.
if I really wanted to draw that more accurately, I'd have to blow it up. I think you know, my tools are not precise enough to, to accurately do that. So we are now ready to switch out this bottle form for the next bottle form. My partner is not hearing me. But we are going to switch out this bottle form for the next bottle form and draw the next thing. And then this will be pretty much the end. So these spray bottles are just about some of the most complex forms we're going to be doing in this unit because they combine kind of cube structure, complexity with cylindrical structure complexity. And they're pretty hard to do. So we're going to talk about how to go about it. First step is to give yourself enough room to draw the whole thing. So I don't make my mistake. So like any kind of cube object, a lot of it depends on getting these angles right. So we're going to talk about getting those angles right in a little bit, but I want to get kind of a feel for the structure first. Kind of a metaphor for how I want this to be put together. Now I think I'm a little bit off in terms of this needs to go up a bit. This one needs to come in a bit. As we get to these more complex forms, one of the things you'll notice is kind of a repeat theme, which is we want to simplify it first. Consider, consider a metaphor that is the simplest version. So instead of all the complexity of what's going on with the neck right now, we're just simplifying that neck into sort of a U-shape extended kind of tube that then is going to lead to a straight up and down cylinder, which is kind of the cap neck. And then we're going to get to the spray nozzle. Okay, so before we get too far more invested in this, let's double check to make sure that our angles are right. My feeling for that bottom angle is about right. I think I'm, I'm a little bit too steep, just by a hair. Which is once again going to be probably the opposite of the error that, that you are more likely to make. Um, which is generally most students will flatten out these bottom angles the first couple of times they draw a form like this. I think I have a tendency to do the opposite because of just all my experience of looking for space and form when I'm looking at an object like this. And so I tend to just slightly over exaggerate it. So slightly over exaggerated the thickness of that neck. And now we can get to 
thinking about the complication of these grips, these finger grips on, on the neck. This particular shape, the next demo that I do, hopefully it'll be an in-person demo, as long as, as long as the world collaborates with us. The next time I do, one of the things we talk about it is this exact shape right here, uh, what I like to call the Pringle shape. Um, and it's the shape that's created by the intersection of one curve with a curved form. These cut lines, these kind of incisions on the form are less important. I don't think it's necessary for us to draw them out in any more precision than just simply to place them to know roughly where they, how they lie on the surface. So the only true cylinder here in this entire spray bottle is right there in that kind of capped neck kind of the top of the neck, the part that's not a handle, the part that leads to the spray nozzle. This angle here is going to be related to that angle, but it's going to be much closer to a straight line because it's much closer to my eye level at this point. And this very front piece of the spray nozzle is really the only form on here that is a straight, perfect cube form. All right, let's get, I don't have time to get this perfect, but let's get kind of near a good finish stage. I don't, I don't see exactly the structure of what's going on entirely in there, so I'm just going to fudge that for now. I'd have to get up close to it to be absolutely certain what it is I'm looking at. Notice how the plane shifts inward right there. And remember, like, one of the things about forms like this, similar to the cat litter jugs, is that a lot of these corners are rounded, but understand them as if they were square at first and then figure out the roundedness. You'll be much better off than if you try to start with the roundedness. That will distort your understanding of the structure of the form. Same with how I was doing this. I had them all of these as straight lines to begin with to understand what the exact angles were. And then later on, I could see how much some of these curve, but it's best to understand all of those first as straight lines.
time I draw one of these spray nozzles, I always think about how much that looks like one of those Egyptian beards that pharaohs would have. That's a good stopping point. I think we are, we're good to go. All right, thank you. Hopefully I'll see all of you on Wednesday.